Dr. Greg here again with another uh, video on sugar. Uh, this, I believe, is part seven. So again, we're doing a deep dive into sugar, and we, we, we understand its general effects. We understand the politics of sugar. We understand the cost of sugar. I'm going into now the individual parts of our body and how it affects it negatively. So what I'm going to first talk about is stress and how stress and sugar kind of go together. All right. So again, we know that if you have, uh, if you think you're eating a healthy um, power bar or a healthy vitamin water drink, you're getting more sugar than you think you're getting. Couple that with stress. What happens to our bodies with stress is that it wants to deal with the situation at hand. So in other words, if we're stressed at work or if we, we're stressed at any kind of situation, arguing or driving a car and traffic, what have you, our stress levels go up. And the things that, that happen under stressful situations happen to your body. Now, I'm going to get into that in a minute. So this is like, say, several hundred years ago, we're running away from a lion or uh, just, you know, hunting deer and a fisher cat comes after you or something like that. Those are stressful moments that are necessary to occur so that you can respond to them. What happens to your body when you have stress? What happens is adrenaline and cortisol are released in your body and that actually mobilizes your sugar stores. It suppresses insulin activity and makes it more difficult for you to absorb sugar into your cells. So more blood sugar is occurring in your bloodstream to be used as energy. Your brain needs it to focus, your, your muscles need it to make, move or to fight or whatever you have to do. So that's what happens when you have a stressful situation. Now your brain cannot conceive what is real stress and what is unreal stress. So any kind of stress that occurs where you feel that you might uh, have bodily harm or you're feeling stressed because someone is upsetting you, that causes an increase in, these, in cortisol and adrenaline, which actually causes this flood of sugar to go into your system and makes it harder for you to store the sugar. Add to that eating a power bar, vitamin water, or a cookie, whatever, you're adding more sugar into this equation, which actually pumps up the stress even more. So sugar, in your bloodstream actually causes more stress to occur and with adding our natural stress it actually pumps up the blood sugar even more so you see that we're at a significant disadvantage under stressful situations especially when we're eating more sugar than we actually should or actually we even know so what kind of effects does this have this chronic stress have on you well it causes heart disease high blood pressure, headaches could, are possible, sleep problems, you can't get to sleep, um, chronic anxiety and depression. So chronic stress can lead to high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, heart disease. All those things can occur with chronic stress and what happens when you eat sugar you're mimicking a chronic stress situation <laughs> or a stressful situation. So your body's gonna go in that direction. It's gonna release cortisol, it's gonna release adrenaline, and you're gonna say, okay, we have to mobilize the sugar for defensive purposes or to fight or to run away. That is kind of what's happening in your body in almost an imperceptible way. It's a subconscious thing. You can't say, all right, my cortisol is gonna shut off and my adrenaline is gonna shut off. You can't do that. It takes a lot of work to overcome anxiety. And there are ways of overcoming anxiety and stress. Now, what happens with chronic stress, high levels of sugar for your brain? Now your brain uses sugar or glucose for energy. That's all it can use for energy. What happens if you put more energy than is needed into a system? Let's say you put uh, more energy in it actually happened um, recently where the energy was going, going so fast, like look at uh, Chernobyl, the energy in there was out of control and it blew up, right? 
The same thing with us is if we get too much energy, our body can't process it, so it starts to break down a little bit. It starts to cause problems for your brain. One of the things that happens with excessive sugar in your bloodstream is what we call brain fog. Brain fog is like, I can't think, I can't, I can't do anything, I'm tired all the time. That's your brain trying to process the sugar because it has to get rid of excess sugar. And it's not really designed to do that. Now, what does excess sugar do? It actually impairs memory and learning skills. It also may cause or contribute to depression and anxiety, which I talked about just a few minutes ago. There's also age-related cognitive decline and dementia. Sugar has an impact. They call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes. They do that for a reason. Sugar impacts your brain negatively. It also creates an, in, an intense cycle of cravings. So your, your, your brain is craving the sugar. So when your brain is, has its attention on something other than learning or doing a task, it doesn't have the energy to do the other things, so your brain gets tired when you try to do other things. That's just the very first impact on brain which we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about things called Lewy bodies and tau bodies and stuff like that, which actually is related to sugar consumption, over sugar consumption. Now, when I want you to remember that when you're stressed, your sugar levels go up. When you're eating a power bar or a vitamin water or juice, you're thinking you're being healthy, you're actually your sugar levels are also going up. And then when you have, oh, I can have that candy bar because I've eaten healthy, your sugar goes up even more. So you see you're having a lot more sugar than you're really aware of. And all these videos are just to help you understand where this sugar is coming from. So, and we live in a very stressful society. So, how do we deal with this stress? How do we deal with these situations? There are a few things. And I'm just going to tell you what they are. And I'm actually going to deal with each one later on. And actually, I dealt with some of them earlier in other videos. So, one of the things that helps you with stress and sugar cravings and anything along those lines is just get out and be physical. Do a, uh, I have many on my channel, I have many little quick little exercises you can do to overcome the stress or the desire or the anxiety or the depression. Any kind of physical activity gets your brain to work better. And if it get, works better, reduces the sugar levels, you're gonna be better overall. Now, yoga or meditation is really good. And I talk about belly breathing, breathing into your stomach as opposed to up here. Breathing up here also increases stress. Breathing down here will increase calmness. Also, you know, speaking, getting it out. Don't keep it in. Speak to a coworker, a friend, a loved one, whatever, just to get that information out. And you don't have to have them solve your problems. Just talking about it goes a long way in reducing the stress. Also, you know, give yourself a break. Don't beat yourself up. We're all under stressful situations. Every day we have more stress than we really should, and it's generally not your fault. So don't beat yourself up, understand it, and try and deal with it that way. Always do something fun. Don't ruminate about the stress, try and forget about it. Always do something that you enjoy, whether it be a hobby, whether it be just talking to friends again about anything, not necessarily what's going on. Eating healthy foods, this is where the sugar comes in. Don't eat something that says I'm healthy and look at it and see that there's a lot of sugar in it. Again, alcohol and caffeine consumption can increase stressful situation. Alcohol converts to sugar and caffeine increases that stress cortisol response. And finally, getting enough sleep, which is also very difficult if you're under a lot of stress. Getting enough sleep is not easy. And we're gonna talk about that down the road. If you have a lot of sugar before you go to bed, you're not gonna be sleeping very well. Sugar in your bloodstream says that you're under stress, which actually increases cortisol and adrenaline, which is not gonna get you to sleep. So that's where we're at right now. 
stress, sugar, brain, not a good combination. So this is Dr. Greg changing the way you look at health.